Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are doing a short video about an update to a game that I've talked about on this channel and played on this channel quite extensively in the past, and that game is War on the Sea. Now, a couple of months back when Steam had one of their sales, I think it was the summer sale, I mentioned that War on the Sea was one of the best games on sale for war gamers, and uh, quite a few of you responded to that, basically saying, hey man, this game's dead. Um... You know, I didn't think that was necessarily a problem. I have no issue promoting games, even if they're no longer being updated. You can still get a lot of fun out of a game, even if the dev, dev isn't releasing new updates. But I didn't know that either at the time that uh, that I was looking at that. I hadn't played it in a while. I just knew it was a game that I really enjoyed. It was a game that uh, some other content creators who I talked to uh, still continued to play, like Wolfpack and whatnot. Um, but... Uh, I didn't know it was dead, or I didn't know that people thought it was dead. However, uh, after about a year with no updates, uh, there was an update posted to the War on the Sea page yesterday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday of this week, so a couple of days ago. And the update is pretty interesting to me. Um, expanded World and Destructible AAA. Uh, destructible AAA whatever, so AAA mounts can be destroyed now. Okay. Uh, but this is a update which released into beta, so it's, I guess, testing. It's the first update in like a year, almost-ish. And the biggest thing that I think stands out about it, there's like a lot of updates to text files and functionalities under the hood. I don't know if this is an indication that they're going to be releasing more content, or if this is a release strictly geared toward modders. Um, because again, almost all of the updates, it references like there's, you know, added text files for temperate, temperate summer, uh, Tagia summer, uh, tundra summer, tundra winter, polar summer, polar winter. So like there's new biome updates, um, and also updates to existing desert, grassland, and tropical region regions, uh, which are now correctly assigned based on geography. So I guess there must've been some randomness in terms of terrain being assigned to different biomes. Uh, and now it should be historically accurate based on where in the map you are. Um, but I think the thing that really stood out is that they added world terrain data encompassing the regions of the North Atlantic, which covers the East Coast to, of the US to Norway, the Mediterranean, which covers the UK to Gibraltar and to Iraq, and the Indian Ocean, which covers Maldives to Vietnam. So that could be a big deal. Um, this is a game that originally when it first came out focused really just on the South Pacific, specifically around the Solomon Islands. The game's campaign was the struggle for Guadalcanal. Uh, the units that were included were really focusing between 42 to 43. And so it was kind of a regional operational level war game where the objective was basically to land troops on different islands in the South Pacific so that you could basically build rings uh, to defend Guadalcanal and build Guadalcanal up to a certain point, at which point you would win. Um, I never saw that. We wiped out the Japanese Navy, but I never actually like won the land campaign. But like you could do landings and other things like that. And again, really it was about like the Japanese bringing reinforcements down from Rabal to try and stop the allies as they push toward Guadalcanal and the allies pushing up from Esprit de Santos to try and take Guadalcanal. They did have some indications in the menus that like, hey, maybe they'll expand this to other theaters, but they never really did. I don't know what was background data previously, but I know that like other than some menu stuff, the game is Pacific centric. Now there were some very successful and popular mods. Uh, there was one that looked at the Dutch East Indies uh, in 1941, 42, uh, which basically was covering the Japanese campaign to take the Dutch East Indies. And then there was one that was called the, I believe, Tokyo Express mod, which I think was more broadly across the whole Pacific, um, covering those, those the, the sort of wider Pacific war. But with this terrain data that is being provided, that opens up the possibility of campaigns in the North Atlantic, in the Mediterranean, in the, in the Indian Ocean. This update doesn't say anything about if the developer's planning on releasing an official campaign, for those regions. Uh, there's also some other updates where it looks like you can uh, either enable or disable the ability to take over sort of the home port because every every country, uh, in at least in the base game, you have one home port um, 
where everything spawns, kind of, and then it's sort of, you can, you can ship stuff out from there. But, uh, this looks like you can turn that on or off, uh, in terms of the ability to take those ports and then bombard those ports. And then if you lose your, your, your only home port or your last home port, uh, then the campaign ends. So that's another thing that they updated here. Um, but I, but I don't see anything like all of these stuff and I'll link in the description uh, about this update, but all of this stuff is like text file updates. Um, you know, you can change the width of elevation data supporting the strategic map. Um, there's, they did provide some example campaign maps. It says that these campaign maps are not playable in current state and are example templates only. Um, so they have an example template for uh, the uh, Pacific region for the Battle of the Atlantic uh, uh, region, like if you were to do a Battle of the Atlantic campaign, Mediterranean and Indian Ocean. Um, so that, there's apparently also default maps added to four folders containing strategic map test graphics and water masks corresponding to the regions of the Pacific, North Atlantic, and that Indian. So... I mean, I'm not a modder or a coder or anything like that, but the way I'm reading this is that they added terrain data for these regions. They added folders that correspond to these regions, and they added some examples of what a campaign map could look like within those regions, but that they didn't actually create usable campaigns or campaign maps yet. Now, this could be a prelude to an official update where they actually provide campaigns, I have my doubts about that. I don't have any real reason, but like they went radio silent for a year, came back with these updates. I'm skeptical that unless the, like I would think if they were gonna do another campaign at this point over given the length of time, what they probably would do is just release War on the Sea 2, Battle of the Atlantic or whatever. Like that's, that's what I think like from a business point of view might make sense. Maybe they'll release like a DLC campaign, possibly, I suppose that's a possibility. But what I think this is, and then I'm just speculating here, but what I think this really is, is I think this is the developer realizing that there's an appetite for the game out there, realizing that there were some structural under the hood things that needed to be updated to support mods beyond what was already included. And I think, and maybe a modder reached out to them and was like, hey, I really want to be able to do these things. And then they're like, all right, I'll make these updates and that'll, that'll help you out. Because if you think about it this way, like if someone goes out and releases a mod for the Mediterranean or releases a mod for the North Atlantic or for the Indian Ocean, that's going to go a long way toward um, making this game able to sell well, right? Like if there's a really popular mod that comes out for the Battle of the Atlantic, all these content creators who play this game a lot, I haven't played it recently, but like much bigger guys like Wolfpack who play this game pretty regularly, if there's a big mod that comes out for the North Atlantic or other things like that, that could really reinvigorate this game, maybe push new sales, really keep the game viable from a business point of view. I don't see why you release all this data publicly for everybody if you're gonna go out and try and sell something. If it's, it's, it's like clearly like this stuff is editable and what, you know, a modder would need to do stuff. I'm not as into like, I don't know how much modders can do in terms of new ships or graphics. I don't know how much of that stuff is hard coded. So I don't know if they'd like need to do stuff to add um, Italian. Like if you wanted to add the Italian Navy or the resources there for you to do that. Um, you know, there's already Royal Navy assets. There's already Australian Navy assets, uh, US and Japan. See, Germany's not in the game at all. But to me, this really screams of, I'm going to open this game up for modders, let them see what they can do. And then, you know, maybe maybe that makes me a bunch more money as the developer, right? Like if they if they go and release some stuff. Uh, and, and maybe that's like the sort of the official, like, all right, here's what you need to do your thing, do your thing, and now I'm gonna go off and, and, and maybe they're already working on a, a, another game or another sequel. That's kind of where my head's at. Again, this is all just me speculating. I don't know anything, uh, but that's where my head's at. And so that, but either way, that's a pretty cool update, whether there's something more coming down the line or whether, hey, this is what modders need to make a bunch of new cool mods. So then maybe 
you know, maybe we're playing this game five years from now because someone released a North Atlantic mod. I, what I want to see is a Mediterranean mod. I don't, I, I don't think that theater gets enough coverage. Um, the campaign between the Italians and the Royal Navy in, in 1940 and 41 uh, was really touch and go at some times. And there was quite a bit of naval activity in the Mediterranean. Uh, the Italians had a pretty decent fleet. Um, and so there were some pretty high profile engagements and that always like that never gets covered in war games. Nobody ever talks about the Mediterranean campaign in computer war games in any, in any of them. I think maybe great naval battles uh, had one of their games look at the med maybe um, by SSI years and years ago. But like even things like, you know, war in, in the West, uh, which is a strategic level war game. Mediterranean, you don't even get naval ships in that game. It's just like simulated. Now, that, that takes place starting in 43, so the naval campaign was mostly over by then outside of just naval landings. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm interested. Maybe, you know, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on, uh, on any mods that might come out or if there's any further updates that might come out for this. And, uh, and maybe we'll do a series of War on the Sea. But this is an exciting update for War on the Sea. A game that I think folks had thought was past the point of getting support uh, gets a update into beta, which presumably will leave beta at some point uh, and uh, and maybe breathe some new life into this game that is not that old. Um, just came out a few years ago uh, and I think is uh, is there's, there's not a lot of war games out there like it. So um, just wanted to let you guys know that I don't usually do like, hey, there's a patch or an update like this. Uh, Victoria 3 had a patch come out recently, I believe. I don't usually do that kind of news stuff on here. Usually when I do news stuff, it's like, hey, there's a new game that came out you should be aware of. But I thought this was something that folks might find interesting, especially since there were so many comments on that uh, top Steam sale game uh, video I did where I mentioned this game. Um, so anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Definitely want to hear your what you guys all have to say. Um, they did some other things. I think they improved like terrain uh, graphics as well to make them look a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where this goes and um, That's all I got for you. So thanks again for tuning in until next time This is the historical gamer as always saying thank you for watching and until next time I'm out <laughs>